What's up guys, so I'm out on the trap line today and today we're going to be doing something we haven't done on this channel in a while. We're going to be doing a catch and cook. Now not just like a normal catch and cook with like a rabbit or a squirrel or a bluegill or something. We're doing a stinking coyote catch and cook today. So I will say I've never tried coyote before. I have tried fox and uh, it left a pretty bad aftertaste but uh, I'm kind of expecting the same results with the coyote. But I guess I'm going to go ahead and show you the coyote right now. Here he is right here. Not, not a bad little coyote. He's actually pretty big. Probably big male. And, well, he's pretty light colored too. Nice looking coyote right here. Oh, there he goes. He's up now. We got him really good right in the bridger number two. So I'm going to go ahead and get this thing dispatched and I'll show you guys up close what it looks like. But before we do that, I'll go ahead and show you guys the weapon. I will use to take this guy out. Alright, so here's my weapon of choice today. It's just my 22 caliber brake barrel pellet gun. And I've been using this all trapping season. I've only been trapping for about two weeks this season, but um, I've caught about four coyotes. Yeah, this will make this will make coyote number three. And I've used this on all my coyotes so far. To shoot them, I use I take heart shots on these coyotes, and it actually works like as good as a 22 long rifle does, and it puts them down nice and quick. Within 20 seconds, it brings them down. But you got to hit them square in the heart with this pellet gun, unless because if you miss the heart and you hit them in the lungs, sometimes it takes an extra shot to put them down. And the reason I do heart shots on these coyotes is because when you take head shots, they bleed everywhere and all over your trap, all over your set. And that is not what you want when you trap coyotes because if you want to reset this trap, which is a very good idea after you catch a coyote, is to reset the trap because more coyotes are going to be coming through here, smelling where this guy has been, and they're going to see that blood and smell it, and they'll, they'll be thinking something's not right here. So we want as little blood as possible. And another good reason for heart shot is because when you're skinning a coyote out, and when you get to the head, there's just going to be blood everywhere, and that's not not the best thing in the world so we're going to take this guy out when we get him down i'll show you guys up close what this guy looks like all right so i got the coyote down right here it did take two shots to put him down with the with a pellet gun but you know sometimes that's just how it happens and you don't get a perfect shot but right after that second shot he went down fast so very quick efficient death so i'll go ahead and show you him a little bit closer but I'll show you the trap here I'm using real quick. So this is just a bridger number two, just a normal bridger number two. Uh, four coiled, he's got the trap pretty muddy, but it does have four coiled on, four coils on there. And that all that does is just make this trap a little more powerful so it comes out of the ground faster, uh, especially when it's the ground is a little bit more frozen and you need that little extra speed to get that trap coming out. So you get a nice high pad catch on him, but this guy kind of tore my trap up a little bit bent that pan really bad but we can probably bend that back have to readjust the pan tension on it too so we're ready to reset this thing so here's the coyote right here not a bad coyote looks like it's a big male awesome that's why I expected it to be nice shot right there with the pellet gun and here is where we caught him it's kind of bloody but this doesn't usually happen and the reason it's so bloody is because I'm pretty sure this guy chewed on his foot a little bit while he was in the trap. Most of the time when you're tra coyote trapping, you don't see this a lot of blood, but I don't know, he must have been chewing on his foot because that never happens when his foot is bloody. But I can feel the bone. His foot's not broken at all. If you would have let this guy go, he would have been fine. He would have healed up the spots where he bit himself, but he was just trying to get out of the trap. It's a pretty nice coyote. Got a bunch of burrs on him. We're gonna have to brush those out before we skin them up. Yeah, pretty nice one. Let's check out his big teeth right here. Oh yeah, look at that. Big canines. That'll put a lot of animals down. Out of all the animals I trap, get, catching a coyote is definitely the most satisfying because when you're trapping these coyotes, you know that you're safe in a lot of other animals' lives because these things want to eat everything. They want to eat. They want to eat squirrels. Fox, they're a big fox killer around here. When they see a fox, they would just want to kill it. Turkeys, uh, squirrels, rabbits, I don't know if I said those already, but they eat just about everything out here. Uh, they also eat a ton of fawns. This guy probably eaten countless numbers of fawns, which are baby deer. When you think about it, it's a really good idea to trap these coyotes and get them out of here because 
just how many animals they kill. It's crazy. So I'm going to go ahead and get this trap reset. It's definitely a good idea to set this because more coyotes will definitely be coming through here. This is actually, uh, this is the second coyote I've caught out of this trap this year. And that catch will be in a different video. I've got, I put a whole bunch of my trapping catches in a different video coming out later. Not sure when it's going to be out, but it'll probably be out here in a little bit. Get this trap reset, gonna have to fix it up a little bit before we put it back in the ground for another coyote. And we'll keep on checking traps. I will tell you, I've already checked all my traps and we got a little surprise for you guys coming up here in a little bit, so stay tuned. And I also saw this earlier when I was walking up to this trap. This is right there where the coyote is. You can actually see this guy's tracks right here in the mud. Coming right up here, coming right to the trap right there and that's where we got him. So. He must have came from one of these waterways up here, just following it down, right up through here, boom, right on the trap. A good location for coyote trapping, just like a good intersection. There's a trail right there, trail right there, waterways they like to travel come through around here. Just a good spot for to put a coyote trap in, because there's going to be a lot of them traveling up through these trails a bunch. And I'll go ahead and show you the trap when I'm done resetting it, how it looks. It's going to look pretty good. It's going to... It's gonna definitely it's gonna look like a coyote's been here for sure because that's what we want it to look like but it's not gonna look like there's been a coyote killed here or something all right here's the remake just finished setting the trap down there it definitely looks like something's been here which is actually what we want it to look like even when I'm first setting my coyote traps I try to really um, scrape all this area up just so it looks like something's been digging digging everywhere here you can see I blended all my peat moss in all the way out here just so it doesn't look like there's one dry spot right there and if you look closely you can probably guess my trap pan is right there that's about the same as I had it before um, the good thing about peat moss that I like is it leaves all these little uh, little soft chunks um, of packed peat moss in and you can just put that around where your trap is so it leaves a nice bare spot for your pan to be right there the coyotes when they come up to this they're gonna see this in my trap is off-centered a little bit to the right so they'll come up and instead of stepping straight in front and landing right there they'll want to um, not step on any of this they'll want to step right on that trap pan and that's where they'll get caught right there so really nice set hopefully we'll catch another coyote here in the next few days wouldn't be very surprising because we've already got two out of this location all right well I'm at the a new location where I got some more coyote traps and here's what we got we have nothing don't worry this is not the surprise it's still coming up but we had something definitely here last night uh i don't know it's not very disturbed at all i don't know if we just had a deer come through here or what but there is some hair there's some hair on the jaws too right there see that I don't know guys, we had something here. I'm hoping it was a deer because if that was a coyote, he would be trap shy right now and we would probably never catch him in a foothold again. But I'm, I am thinking it's a deer just because of this big line on the pan right there. And that's more of like what a deer's hoof would make, I think. I don't know, that's just what I'm thinking, but I'll get this trap reset, put it back in the ground how it was before and well we will move on to some new traps while i was resetting this trap just looked over here it was definitely a deer i can see his little hoof marks right there so looks like we had a deer in the trap and he pulled right out of it which is what we want um, these traps aren't powerful enough to hold a deer thankfully so just enough to hold a coyote that's good all right guys we're coming up on the surprise i just mentioned earlier in this video it's actually right over this hill can you guess what it is we got us another coyote bouncing around. You can't even see it. There he is right there. We got us two coyotes in one day. Wow, that's awesome. So this is actually the first time I've ever caught two coyotes in one day. Uh, I have caught two fox in one day, which is going to be in that trapping video I, uh, I also mentioned earlier in this video. That's awesome. I've never caught two coyotes in one day. I cannot believe it. That makes number four coyotes of the year. So normally every year I only catch like two coyotes, which is pretty good for me, but this year I'm really hammering the coyotes and we got, we're catching them a lot so far and it's only been like two weeks uh, since I started trapping this year. But here he is, another pretty nice coyote actually. It looks like a big male. I'm guessing it's a male, I don't know, I have no idea, but 
He's pretty big. I don't know if he's as big as the first one today, but man, we got him good right up on the paw, super high catch. And you actually can notice there's no blood on that foot at all. I'll talk about that a little later. But this is a really good location for coyote trapping. We got, actually there's another trap right there, and there's a deer carcass right there I put here about two weeks ago. These traps have been here solid two weeks since I first started trapping, and we finally got one. And this is a pretty good spot because we got this big pasture woods, and just the pasture coming all the way around fence line right here and everything just narrows right down into this crossing of the creek and this is just a killer spot for coyotes because it all funnels down right here and there's also just you can see a whole bunch of tracks from everything in there even deer too so just a good spot for coyote trapping so not a bad looking coyote he's actually he's pretty dark he's pretty dark coyote too he's got a little cool looking white tip tail that'll be some nice fur when we get him skinned up today awesome so I'm gonna use the pellet gun again take this guy out and we'll see we'll take a closer look at him again and see what he see what he is here alright we have the coyote down only took one shot with the pellet gun this time which is uh, usually what happens anyways but we'll go and show you guys right here here he is nice looking coyote he's still in the trap I haven't got him out yet one shot to the heart put him down before 30 seconds and let's see what he is it is a female. That's the first female I've caught all year, surprisingly. That's a big female, though. And here's where we got him. You can see way up high, even above the pad right there. That is what you want. There's no way that coyote's pulling out of that. You can see there is some blood on its feet, but that's just from where I shot him. So I'll take this guy out of the trap. I'll show you his foot a little bit better, show you the damage that the trap caused to it which is basically nothing. So here's his foot not bloody at all he didn't it doesn't look like he chewed on it at all like that last coyote but you can see there's just a little line right there from where the trap got him no blood no no broken anything just compressed just a little bit compressed from where the trap got him and you can see in the line just is because there's some dirt that got pushed into his fur and on the back side you can't even really see anything there's not even a line so this trap did not do any damage at all to this coyote if you let him go just like the last one he would have ran away no problems at all but I don't know why you want to let one of these things go anyways because he would just tear all the animals up in here he's probably eating countless numbers of little baby fawns and all that so nice coyote to take out of the woods here and just like before this is the same trap I'm using just a bridger number two four coiled just a little more powerful just like the last coyote um, right here you can actually come down and you can see coyote tracks in the mud like just from last night there's a nice little coyote track right there coming up here I don't know there might, there's a good really good chance there could have been two coyotes coming right here if we would have caught probably male and female traveling right here um, but a lot of times what will happen is you catch the male first and the female actually stays around and that's when you, uh, it's a really good idea to set two traps and she'll, and after you catch the male, she'll just hang around with him, and eventually there's a good chance um, she'll get caught too. But we got the female, so the male probably didn't stick around very long. I don't know, usually when you get the female first, the male tries to um, attack the female, I guess, but, and then runs off, so I don't know if, the, if she got attacked or not tonight. But, we still got us a coyote. So I actually forgot to bring more peat moss. So I have to go all the way back home and go refill my peat moss, come back and reset this trap. And if I dig up dirt around here, it's probably just gonna freeze because it just rained a bunch and this dirt is kinda, kinda muddy. So it's just gonna freeze over and it's gonna look like a brick sitting on top of my trap and it's not gonna go off. So I gotta go back, get some peat moss, remake this set. I think I'll do a time lapse for this set just because so you guys get a little more idea of how I set my coyote traps. Kind of a fun story about this location right here. Um, I think it was two years ago I came down here and actually caught a coyote and basically this same spot is where I caught that coyote. And you know I was just coming over the hill like I just was earlier. I looked over, saw a big coyote and this was before I used earth anchors to stake my traps down. You guys can probably already tell where this is going. But I used a big long rebar stake to and drive it in the ground to hold my trap down. And I came over here and I saw that coyote jumping around. I thought we had him. He did one big jump. He pulled the stake out of the ground 
<laughs> he started running away. And that, that coyote wasn't very smart, okay? He actually ran straight into this big bush of thorns and stuff, and he actually got caught in it. And I was able to put him down still, so we got, still got that coyote, which is pretty crazy. Like, I shouldn't have even got that coyote, but at least we got him down. He still had the trap on his foot, and if he would have got away, that would have been not good for the coyote. He probably would have suffered and died a long, painful death, which is not something you want to happen. So after that happened I decided I am done using rebar stakes for coyote trapping. I moved over to earth anchors, haven't had any problems with them pulling those out and because they're pretty solid in there. There's, I don't know, it takes like maybe like 300 pounds to pull one of those things up. But So yeah, I'm gonna go home, get some peat moss, come back here, reset this trap, do a time lapse of it, and then we'll get these guys skinned out get some good fur off of them and then hopefully we can get some good meat off of them to try later. Alright I'm back, I got some more peat moss. Refilled my bucket with a bunch of good dirt for resetting this coyote trap so we can make it um, working as good as it used to be. So I'll set you guys up probably probably right about here so you can see so we can do a time lapse for this coyote trap. So here we go. Right here is the finished coyote set. Just a standard dirt hole right there. Got my bait. Got some lure right there and some coyote urine. Just freshened up this coyote poop that from that coyote we just caught here. And my trap pan is right there in that bare spot. Nice set. I had to kind of work on this a little bit extra than I normally do because that coyote really dug out my trap bed a lot and made it super deep so I had to kind of dig out the sides a little bit so it was just kind of more level but it turned out to work out and should be a good spot for new, another coyote coming through here. Alright so I'm going to head home take both these coyotes and get them skinned up and hopefully we can get some meat off of them. So here they are, there's the first one right there and here's the second one. Uh, the first one's definitely bigger, I don't know if you can tell real well but that's the male, that's the female. This one, female, mm, probably at least 30 pounds, maybe 35. Let's see what the male is here. Oh man, that's noticeably heavier, probably, probably pushing 40 pounds pretty easily. So we'll load them up, take them home, and skin them out. Alright, so I'm back home. I already got this coyote hanging up, ready to skin out, and the other one's just out in the driveway still. So I'm actually not going to film any of the skinning because this takes me like two and a half hours to skin and flush one coyote. And there's my other two coyotes right there that are all stretched out and dried. So I'm just going to get back with you guys whenever I'm done with this, and I'll see you when we start taking some meat off of this. Hopefully it won't take like four hours though, but it probably will. Alright, so I just finished skinning out the coyotes. It probably took like, uh, I don't know, like two hours probably, but I finally got them done. I haven't even started flushing them yet, but I can do that some other time. So here they are right here. This is the big male one, and this thing's massive. When we stretch him out, he's going to be huge. Got his tail all deboned. See his face right here. Looks pretty good. And here's the other one right here. This one looks like it's a little better. It's got a lot more color to it. Pretty nice looking. Same thing, got the head and the nose on there. I looked at the, this is the big one's tail. It's like missing its guard hairs. A lot of its guard hairs are gone actually. See, it's like just fuzz. And when you look at this one, you could actually see the long hairs coming out, out off of it. See that? Compared to this one, it's just like fuzz, so I don't know what's wrong with this one. Hopefully it wasn't starting to get mange or something, I don't know. So here's one of my other coyotes right here. This has already been fleshed out and it's stretched. It's actually pretty much done drying too. But this is what it's going to look like when it's done. Just nice cardboard, I guess. And 
Uh, when, when all of my animals are done drying them also, I'm just going to throw them in the freezer, make sure all the fleas and ticks are dead on them. And then I'm going to tan all these. Probably I'll probably wait till summer to do that just because it's going to be nice outside then. Or some warm day in the winter. There's my other one right there. Alright, so we got, this is the female coyote. This is the only coyote I'm going to be taking any meat off of. I don't really need a lot of meat, so I'm not going to get meat off of both coyotes. Plus, there might be something wrong with that other one. But this, this one looked fine, so I'm just going to get enough meat to have a taste of it. So I'm going to be getting the back straps, which are probably the best part on any animal, which is right, right along the spine right here. And we'll get some of this good meat up on the legs, too, so I'm just going to cut into the meat. Alright, so this is basically all coyotes have for back straps. It's not a lot of meat. I mean, it's definitely enough to get a taste out of it. I'm actually going to cut the other one off just so we have some extra, just in case it turns out really good. But I'll be surprised if it actually is good. Let's get the other one out real quick. And well, that's all I got out of that one. Just about a bite. Alright, so we're going to come up to the legs now. Now, there's a lot, there's a pretty decent amount of meat up here. Like, there's kind of a lot of meat, so. There's a nice piece of leg meat. And that should do it right there. I got, I'll go and show you how much meat I, I got out of this. It's not really that much. Alright, so here's the meat. This is the back straps. And this is the back leg. So like I said, not a lot of meat. Just, just enough so we can get a taste of it. And... That's about it for skinning. So I'll see you guys whenever I decide to cook up this meat. It's probably going to end up being tomorrow. So I will see you then. Alright guys, so it's actually been like three or four days since I last um, skinned the coyotes and got meat off them. But before we go and cook them, I'm just going to show you guys something real quick. So these are the two coyotes I got. That one's an old coyote caught earlier this year. It's pretty dry. It's pretty much done drying by now. But these are the two coyotes uh, I caught earlier in this video. This is the male one, the first one we caught. This is the female, the second one we caught. And remember how earlier in the video I was talking about... Um, how the female got caught first and then the male usually like attacks the female and just basically runs away right after he attacks the female so it turns out I think I was right about that when I was skinning and flushing this coyote I could see here I'll just take it down real quick but you can see all these little bite marks on the on the lower end of this coyote and it's just like there's bite marks everywhere and they're fresh too like you can see the blood on them well, that's pretty crazy so it looks like there was a, yeah it definitely looks like there was a, another coyote with this one when it was caught because it does look like it's been attacked by another one for sure. I mean you can see the teeth marks right there. So yeah I just thought I'd show you guys that because I thought it was pretty interesting. But now let's go and try to cook this coyote. Hopefully it turns out good. The meat actually looks pretty good. I'll show you in a little bit. So here it is. This is, uh, I believe this is the back strap. I don't know. I know this is leg. Not sure what these little chunks are, but I know this is back strap. And it looks actually pretty good. It looks like really good looking meat. So come over here. Got a nice fire going already. And I'm just going to be cooking it in that pot right there. So basically, the, all I'm going to do to this meat is just put some seasoning, seasoning on it. This is what I use for a lot of my rabbits and squirrels. So we're just going to put a good amount of seasoning on there. Just rub it right into the meat, just like this. Hopefully, this seasoning will take out a lot of that. Um, a lot of that, I don't know how to describe it, skunky taste, I guess, which is what the fox, is, fox tasted like, and I'm expecting the coyote to taste like that, so hopefully it's not going to be like that, but it probably will be, but I'm going to try my best to make it, make it, um, not taste like that as much. Alright, that should be good. I'm going to take my meat and just set it right down in here. Oh yeah, it's already sizzling. I probably should have brought some butter because this is going to stick really bad, I think. Oh yeah, it looks good though. Hopefully it tastes good. Alright, I believe it is done cooking. Oh man, it's hot. It didn't stick as bad as I thought it would, so that's good. There it all is. It smells amazing, too. Hopefully it tastes as good as it smells. Alright, let's try this stuff. First time ever eating coyote. I'm just going to try this little piece. 
I don't know if this is back strap or leg, but here we go. Okay. That's extremely chewy. Definitely a lot of seasoning on there. It kind of tastes like Fox, but I don't know. It's really different at the same time. So far, it's not leaving any skunky aftertaste, which is kind of surprising. Okay, I can tell you what it kind of tastes like. It actually kind of tastes like rabbit a little bit. This is actually not bad at all. Like, if you gave me a piece of this meat, coyote, um, against a piece of rabbit meat, I probably couldn't tell the difference. It is pretty chewy, though. That's about the only bad thing. But yeah, other than that, it's actually amazing. I did not expect this to be good at all. Yeah, you can kind of see it. It is definitely overcooked. That might be why it's kind of chewy. Oh my gosh. This big piece is not chewy at all. Oh man, that's good. Like this, this big piece, I think this was the... Oh, uh, this yeah, this is the back strap. This the big piece was the back strap. This piece has the consistency of a steak. Like this is actually super good. I cannot believe how good this coyote actually is. Mm. I wash my hands in the snow. So if you guys ever catch a coyote, before you throw away the carcass, just think about eating it because it is actually really good to eat. If you ever tried squirrel or rabbit, this is pretty good compared to it. Much better than the fox was. No no bad aftertaste at all. <clears throat> well, I guess that's it. Alright guys, so that's going to be it for the catch and cook. I'm going to stay here, keep eating this coyote because it's actually really good to eat. So... Let me know in the comments, do you guys like these catch and cook videos? Because these are pretty interesting to try for me. I kind of like them because I would have never eaten this coyote um, if it wasn't for making this video. So I'm really glad I tried it. Make sure to hit the like button if you want to see more catch and cook videos like this one. And let me know in the comments again, Do you want what kind of animals do you want me to try next? Because I've tried just about every kind of animal except uh, skunk mink muskrat i am planning on doing a muskrat soon so and i've heard it's pretty good too so thank you guys for watching and i guess i'll see you guys in the next video